<laughs> well, along during the war, when Mr. Hoover had cut down our sugar to such a little bit that it couldn't get enough to pay the man, I got to thinking it might be a good idea to get some bees and have some honey. So I got to talking to Jim Lawson about it. Jim said he knowed all about bees. He said one time he drove a swarm of bees from Maine to California and back again that never lost a bee. He said in order to do that, you had to get some old bee that was altar broke and would stand without hitching and put a bell on her and wherever she went, the other bees would follow her. <laughs> he said he drove them to California in the winter and back to Maine in the summer so they could make honey all the year round. He said he had ten wagons with hives on them, and he traveled at night while the bees were sleeping, and in the morning he would camp someplace where there was a good bee pasture, and the bees would come in and unload their honey in the hive. He said he had forty or fifty bees that know their own names and come to him to be petted. He said that bees like to be petted, they would work better. <laughs> <laughs> he said that bees like music too, and most every evening before they went to bed, he would play for them on a piece of paper and a poem. He said they like poem music the best. <laughs> I asked him what become of his bees, and he said, I thought I had a good idea. I crossed them with lightning bugs so they could work nights, and the poor little critters just worked themselves to death. I've been thinking of getting some more, only I ain't got around to it yet. While I didn't take much stock in Jim's bee story, so I wrote a letter to a bee place out in Ohio, and they sent me six hives of bees, a book I told all about bees, and a queen bee. I wrote them for a king bee, but they said the bees I had were suffragette bees that wouldn't have any king bee around. <laughs> I had them about six weeks when a warm day come along and a lot of them took a notion to swarm, and it looked as though I was going to lose most of my bees. I got out some new bungalow hives with all modern improvements and tried to get them to go to housekeeping in them, but they wouldn't do it. They just sat up on the top of a tree and wouldn't come down. <laughs> I commenced to think that maybe I had some IWW bees that had got the other bees to go on a strike. And still I thought bees had more sense than that. I went over to get Jim Lawson, but Jim said he being a stranger to them, they wouldn't pay any attention to him. If it had been his bees, he could have reasoned with them. <laughs> All fucking center turned out to see my bees and try and help me hive them. Deacon Witherspoon said he had heard that a fan playing would make them settle. So we got out the pump and center band to serenade them, but they didn't know what to play. Lige Willard said he thought a selection from Keith Thoban would be appropriate. <laughs> Just then a rainstorm come up and them bees commenced to settle and sting as they settled. Gosh, how pump and center did move. I've been reading in that bee book and it says, a bee can pull 200 times its own weight. I don't know how much a bee can pull, but gosh, how a bee can push. <laughs>